did you know? We're learning about wood frogs. You may think that they're made of wood, but you would be wrong. They use their special colors for camouflage. But that's not the wood frog's coolest trait. They're actually zombies. You heard me right. In the icy cold winter, they stop breathing and their heart stops. But in the spring, the frog begins to thaw and its heart starts beating again. The wood frogs come back to life. How cool is that? Now you know that zombies, at least wood frog zombies, are real. Today on 60 Second Science, we are going to talk about the chemistry of crystallization. Crystallization is a natural process that occurs as materials solidify from a liquid. This can be caused by a physical change. In this case, a temperature change as the boiling water cools. For this demonstration, you'll need one cup of borax, a measuring cup, a glass jar or any container that can safely hold boiling water, something to mix it with, a pipe cleaner, string, pencil, a pan, a stove, and an adult to help with the boiling water. First, we need to boil the water. While you're waiting, bend the pipe cleaner into a candy cane, or whatever shape you want for your crystal ornament. Then, tie a string to the top and to the center of a pencil. If you have extra string, wrap it around the center of the pencil. Thanks. Now, add the borax half at a time, and mix. Keep adding the borax until it becomes a super saturated solution. That's fun to say. It means that there's more solute or borax than the solvent, which is the water can hold. More of the solid can dissolve in the boiling water than in cold water. So as the water cools, crystals will start to re-solidify and stick to your pipe cleaner. Make sure the pipe cleaner does not touch the bottom or it'd be hard to get the ornament out. Now wait 24 hours and see your cool crystal ornament. Now let's check out our crystals. You made a cool science experiment and a Christmas ornament. How cool is that? Hey owls, look at this amazing gemstone I just found. You can find gemstones like these hidden in the soil or in fields. They are created by the process of weathering and erosion. This long process normally takes thousands of years. Lucky for you guys, we have a way to speed it up. Come on, let me show you the rock tumbler in the media center. This is my rock polisher. We're gonna take these boring, disgusting rocks and turn them into these beautiful, shining gems. This machine right here is gonna speed up the process of weathering, which usually takes a long time. Weathering is the process of being worn down over time by wind, water, and contact with other rocks over thousands of years. But who's got time for that? We're gonna weather and polish our own rocks with this machine right here. When you come to the library, make sure to check out the rock tumbler as it weathers those rocks. Okay, owls, I've set the timer. Now I'll see you in five days. We're back. It's been five days since we started the rock tumbler. For the first five days, we were using the number one grit, water, and the action of rocks crashing together to weather these rocks. Let's open the tumbler. The purpose of the number one grit was to round and remove the sharp edges of these rocks. Okay, it's open. Let's pour out the contents of the tumbler into the strainer and rinse the grit off the rocks. Check it out. The edges have started to become round. They've lost a lot of their sharp edges. Remember that oceans and rivers take thousands and even millions of years to produce polished stones, and we started doing it in only a week. Step two, let's load up the tumbler again, and this time we're gonna add grit number two. Grit number two has a finer grit that will smooth even more of the rough edges off our rocks. Okay, it's all loaded up. I've set the timer, and I'll see you in eight days. Yesterday we didn't have school because it was Veterans Day. Veterans Day honors all members of the armed forces who fought and served this country valiantly. These brave Americans served and fought to protect us, to keep our country safe, and to preserve our way of life.
Veterans gave their time and they risked their lives for you and me. In some cases, they made the ultimate sacrifice. This holiday was originally called Armistice Day, but in 1954, President Eisenhower changed it to Veterans Day. Why? This was to honor all the members of the armed forces who fought and died in all the wars. On November 11th at 11.11, fighting ceased in World War I. To honor this tradition, work stops on this day and time each year for a moment of silence. Veterans Day is a day to honor all those who served in the military. So if you know anyone who served in the armed forces, make sure to give them a lot of thanks. Today on this week in history, we're talking about the holiday we just celebrated on Monday. Monday was Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Day. It is a national holiday that is celebrated to honor the birthday of Dr. King. It is observed on the third Monday of January each year. Dr. King was one of the most important people in the American Civil Rights Movement. He led marches and events to promote awareness of black Americans' right to vote, fought against segregation, and other basic civil rights. Dr. King was assassinated in 1966 at the age of 39. So next year, when you observe Martin Luther King Jr. Day, take time 